So now let's look at a practice question. This is based on one experiment, but there are multiple questions about this experiment. All right. Uh, first, you're going to read about this experiment. I'll give you about 30 seconds, and then we'll look at three questions. Okay, background about the experiment. Lupe designed a study to examine the effect of caffeine on the heart rate in rats. Now, this sentence gives you a lot of important information. So Lupe is looking at the effect of caffeine. So this is the factor that she's going to manipulate to change, right? To see if there is any impact on the test animals. And then what is the outcome? The outcome is the heart rate in rats. So she has three doses of caffeine, and those three doses are administered to one-year-old female rats. So you can see in the table that there are three doses, right? Control, that's a zero amount of caffeine. And then the second treatment is 25 milligram caffeine per kilogram body weight. That's just common dose units. Milligram, it usually refers to the chemical that's being tested. And in this case, it's caffeine. And if you remember, I did talk about the three different weight units, milligram, gram, and kilogram, right? And then what objects those units are most appropriate for. So milligram uh, used to describe a very small amount, a very tiny amount. Usually it's some kind of chemical, because those chemicals can exert effects at a very small quantity. So when we measure them for experiments or whatever, we use a milligram, a very small unit to measure the quantity of that chemical. Gram, it's a little bit bigger. And if you do the weight of organs or very, very small animals, like a mouse, right, we can use gram. Kilogram, um, the largest unit of all, one kilogram is a little over two pounds. So usually we use kilogram to describe a body weight, uh, especially human body weight. Okay. And 25 milligram per kilogram, that's a dose unit. Based on the participant's body weight, you're going to try to achieve 25 milligram caffeine per kilogram body weight. Okay, and then the highest dose. The last experimental group is 50 milligram per kilogram. So you can see this is twice as much, right? Okay, so three levels of doses, three experimental groups, including the control. And Lupe measured heart rate before and 10 minutes after the caffeine was administered. And this is the results. And I just want to note that I made up the data completely. Okay, so all the numbers you see are hypothetical and they're just fake data. All right, now when you look at the table, if you remember, I said in the previous lesson that a lot of times on T's, these kind of questions um, and also reading questions too are in the format of a table. So you need to know how to read the table. Um, on the first column has the different groups, right? They receive a different amount of caffeine. And then the next column is average heart rate prior to the treatment, right? That's the baseline. That's before any drug has been given. And then the last column, that's the heart rate after the treatment. Now you have a baseline and you have a post-treatment. So anything that's different between the two could be potentially due to the chemical, the drug, which is caffeine in this case. Okay, we kind of dissected the background a little bit. So now let's look at some questions.
Okay, the first question is about the independent variable in this experiment. So Lupe is examining the effect of caffeine, right? So this is the factor that she wants to study and how this factor can affect a heart rate. So the effect of caffeine is the independent variable. So A is the correct answer. Now, what about heart rate? What about heart rate change? What kind of factor is that? The heart rate is the dependent variable. Because based on the independent variable, based on caffeine, the heart rate can change, right? So it's, it's dependent on what level of caffeine you're giving to the test animals. So heart rate is the outcome, is the dependent variable. And then what about B, the sex of test animals, and D, duration after which heart rate was measured? So those are controlled variables, right? So B and D should be maintained the same between the three groups so that they're not going to affect any outcome, right? They're not going to affect heart rate. So any change in the heart rate should come from caffeine. Okay, next question. Which of the following should be controlled in the experiment? Select all that apply. So these are going to be factors that can change your experimental results, that can change potentially heart rate. So you want to make sure that these factors are exactly the same between the three groups, right? If you do diet, if you do a specific diet for the control, then the same diet should be given to the other two groups. So basically, the question is asking you the control variables. Now, A definitely is one of the correct answers because diet could have some effect on the heart rate. What about the medium that's used to carry caffeine? Because you have to dissolve caffeine in some kind of uh, a solution, right? And then give the solution to the rats. That should be the same as well. If you use water for the control, and you use, let's say, sugar water for the other two groups. There's plain water for control and then sugar water for the other two groups. Then if you see a change in the other two groups, you don't know whether it's because of caffeine or because you're giving these two groups some sugar, right? And that increases the heart rate or decreases the heart rate. So you want to make sure that the medium that carries the caffeine uh, is the same. If you use water, use water for all three. If you use sugar water, then you use sugar water for all three. Now, usually we want to use something that's a plain, that doesn't contain any other chemicals. So, so water is usually the uh, most common medium for carrying a drug. So B is also something that you should control. What about C, method to measure heart rate? Absolutely, right? It should be the same among the three groups because different measuring methods may generate a different results that could potentially cause differences between the three groups. So you want to use the same method. Now, what about D, the amount of caffeine given? That should not be the same between the three groups, right? Because the amount of caffeine is the independent variable that should change, that should vary between the different groups. And you can see over here, right? Control receives zero amount of caffeine, and then the other two groups receive a different amount of caffeine. So D is an independent variable. You do not want to make it the same for all the groups. So the correct answer is A, B, and C. All right, last question.
So this is a harder part of doing the scientific reasoning questions. Um, in this question, you have to look at the data now, and then you have to decide whether the hypothesis is supported by the data or not. Now, when you look at the data for this particular experiment, there is one thing to be mindful about. Now, you can't just compare the heart rate post-treatment. You can't just compare these three numbers. The, it's not accurate, right? Because the three groups may have different baselines, right? So you need to take that into consideration. So the best way to look at this is to calculate the difference pre and the post treatment for each group. Okay, so control um, the difference between, you know, this is probably like average, right? Among, could be among 50 rats, 20 rats, right? And then it's the average number. So the average difference is five beats per minute. And then for the next group, the average, the difference is minus one, right? It just means that the post-treatment heart rate is a little bit lower than the baseline. And then for the last group, the difference is 43. Okay? And then you're going to look at these three numbers. Technically, we have to conduct statistical analysis, right, to compare these three numbers. But T's is not going to be that advanced. So you are just going to look at the numbers. And if there's a big difference among the numbers, you can say that the treatment has caused a significant change. Now let's look at the four potential hypotheses. And let's see which one aligns very well with the data we're seeing here in the table. A. Low dose of caffeine affects heart rate in one-year-old female rats. Now, after you compare the data, the change is only minus one, right? That's a very minor uh, difference. So I wouldn't say that the caffeine has any sig significant effect. So A is not a good hypothesis supported by the data. What about B? High dose of caffeine affects heart rate in the rats. Now, when we look at the data, there is a big difference, right? post and prior to the treatment. So I would say this is a reasonable hypothesis supported by the data. So B is the correct answer. What about C? Different doses of caffeine affect heart rate in male rats. Now the experiment is done on female rats, right? We don't know for sure what's going to happen in male rats. They might respond to caffeine similarly, right? But they may also respond differently. So we don't know. We can't make that extrapolation. So C is unknown. It's not supported by the data. What about D? One-year-old female rats show the same response to different doses of caffeine. That's not true, right? Because obviously when they receive the highest dose, they do show some changes in their heart rate. So the correct answer is B, high dose of caffeine uh, seems to affect heart rate in these one-year-old female rats. All right, guys, that is the end, not just for this lesson, but also for the entire uh, T7 science portion. So great job. And I hope these science videos are helpful to you and hopefully you all get really good score for the science portion. Um, I will continue to make more videos on the science part of T7. All right, again, guys, thank you for your support and I will see you next time. Great job.